Welcome back to the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and I'm the real expedition champion. Because this weekend I opened a collector's booster pack. I got a foil windswept team. Ooh, nice. <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle. And did you hear that Jin Yang Yu lost Mowu when planeswalking? No. He's having a really rough time. <laughs> Please listen carefully. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> and this is episode 69. Nice. And we are... <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I should have expected that. Um, And we are here today um, to talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. Um, This week, we also pulled our winner from the patron giveaway. So congratulations to Matt Flucher. Um, Got a pack of Magic Origins with that Flip Kithian in it that we opened up. Um, If you are a patron you are automatically added to that giveaway if you're not a patron you can head over to patreon.com uh slash guardian project pod and subscribe um for any dollar amount we really appreciate that uh we are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of every month for all of our patrons um for all of the packs that we've opened on the show or that we opened on on stream uh donated by our favorite steve uh at cube draft on twitter so we wanted to thank you and uh we couldn't do this without you and we're looking forward to making more content for you in the future and if you're looking for another way so to support the cod support the codcast support the codcast support the podcast. it's like we haven't done this 68 times before this if you're looking for another way to support the podcast <laughs> whenever you are listening to the podcast on whether it's youtube spotify apple Podcasts, if you could leave a comment like subscribe follow If there's another thing you can do, don't hit the thumbs down button, though. Thumbs up, thumbs up button. Comments, good, bad, constructive criticism. We would love it. We would love it. Um, We also have a TCG player affiliate link located in the show notes below. So if you are looking to pick up any singles or sealed magic product using TCG player, please use our affiliate link. We get a little bit of uh, a benefit from that, a little bit of kickback from TCG player, which helps us with some of our patron giveaways or help us create some more content yeah so this past week was a really good week for us because we had we had three firsts mm-hmm. yeah n- th- i guess not firsts just they, they were landmarks no highs mm-hmm. highs let's say that so we Peaks. had the most we had the most viewers mm-hmm. on one of our twitch streams mm-hmm. um last thursday when we did our budget decks yeah um uh, if you didn't see those they'll be posted this coming sunday mm-hmm. on youtube that was a lot of fun. Uh, we had the most responses to one of our tweets. We asked everybody what their first commander deck was that they ever built. And mm-hmm. We got into the triple digits for responses. So that was the first time for us. So that was really excited. Oh, yeah. And then <clears throat> we also had the most listens to our podcast ever in a single week. Um, I always like looking at the graph of anchor. It's like kind of up, down, up, down. Okay, it went up a little, went way down. And then it's just like up, Everest. straight up. It's just, it's, just, it's just a vertical bar for this past week. I don't know what we did. But we love all of you. Yeah. The episode was called Kicking It Old School. Mm-hmm. Coil is also giving out uh, tokens with orders from his TC, or from his Facebook Marketplace account. That's right. Um, we, I don't know. We just, I don't know what it was, but we thank all of you. Yeah. And if last week was your first <laughs> week listening and this week is your second week listening, welcome back to the Guardian Project Podcast. Welcome back. What are we talking about this week? So um, this week we are going to uh, talk about uh, Dragon Shield is com- came out with a new sleeve, custom sleeve. Looks pretty cool. Um, we're going to talk about Jumpstart uh, Europe release. And um, we're going to talk about Commander Legends and some unfortunate news there in terms of when it's coming out. And our main topic is, you know, it's episode 69. So we're going to have... <laughs> We're gonna have a mailbag episode today. We're gonna we, we ask you, the the viewers, the listeners, to uh, to ask us some questions that you want us to answer. And so we have a long uh, list of them. We're actually gonna uh, read them directly from Twitter and Discord that we got those questions from, and we're gonna answer them. Let's jump into it. So I'm really excited about these dragon shield sleeves so they are in beta it's it's called the sleeve crafter so you can get 100 standard size sleeves um you design and build and customize your sleeves um 
it says that your deck isn't just ordinary and neither should your sleeve. So basically you can upload your own image and they will print these. Um, right now it is only available in the EU. So it is 24 99 pounds. Um, I did have to look up, um, those are euros, euros, not pounds, mm -hmm. euros compared to the dollar mm -hmm. and the dollars less. So it's a little bit more, right? I think it was what a dollar 18 euro. Dollar. Compared to a, a dollar is a dollar eighteen. No, so it's worth so more. Yeah, so, so it's worth the, more. The dollar is stronger than the euro right now. See, I don't do math. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> but for I mean, less less than twenty five dollars, you get a custom dragon shield uh, full set of hundred sleeves. So Guardian Project Pod sleeves win. Like yeah, we no? is, we can we literally have to, do it now. No, we're not in Europe. We have to move to Europe. You can order these though, or is oh they only they don't ship to the US yet. Yeah, so we'll have to get if you're listening to this from Europe yes. and you want to affiliate yourself with us and help us out getting some Guardian Project Podcast leaves, email us at Guardian Project Pod at gmail.com. Perfect. <laughs> Guardian Project Pod. Um yeah, so this would be really cool. Um there was there was some there there was some uh pretty um strongly written disclaimer language initially and it was yeah. basically like if you upload your image we have all rights to it is, is kind of what it was saying mm -hmm. and every, you know i we had retweeted this and we said this would be really cool and some people responded immediately and said uh look at the fine print and i was like well we saw we did see it mm -hmm. it's still a really cool idea mm -hmm. i mean i think it was within one day they responded and said actually they were uh those legal people were a little overzealous and overreaching it, it's being corrected we don't want to own your art and forever maintain it and change it they were yeah. like the, the intention was that we we have to put in here we're going to use it to print it like right we have to say we're going to use it to give you your sleep correct because <laughs> they're i mean it, it, most uh, most custom t-shirts custom embroideries that kind of companies they do have that just so that they can use it to sell it to you because otherwise they are selling you that image you have to give them the right to use that image to sell that image back to you yeah so if you're looking for sleeves and you're in the EU, here you go. Do it up. Do it up. So I had not heard about it. It's been a long time since I talked about Jumpstart. It's been a it's long true. time since I complained that I wanted more Jumpstart it's cards. Been a, I gave you a Jumpstart card today. I sold you did. You a I sold you a Jumpstart You card. did. I got a brew back today. That's right. Um, finally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've only been talking about it for a long time. Um, so Jumpstart tabletop release for the EU is happening on October 16th. And I didn't realize that it still hadn't been there. Yeah. No, Europe has been getting kind of uh, the raw end of the jumpstart deal. And we thought we had it bad in North America. Yeah, I didn't realize people still hadn't even had it at all. Mm -hmm. So um, it looks like that is going to uh, come to tabletop on October 16th. The, the, uh, the announcement did say it could be there beforehand, but like check with your LGS there. So I feel like jumpstart was years ago, but it, I know it wasn't, but it, Everything feels like what it's time anymore. Yeah, I mean seriously, we we, we were when just talking. When was Acoria? When we, was Acoria? We were just talking on the way uh, here, talking about um, how Command Fest Chicago was the last Magic event that we did, and that was almost exactly one year ago. You yeah, know, that coming was up in, next month. Yeah, coming up next month. That was in November of last year, and the, the, the well, it would have been the last event. Would have been Magic Fest Detroit, which was in March, which was like canceled. We found out live on the yeah. episode when we were recording that week on a Wednesday that it was canceled that weekend. Yeah. I was like, Are you serious right now? We were recording oh. on the couches, actually. When, we were not Ryan in the studio. Still, when Ryan still had his roommate here. Yeah. Now we're back in the studio. Studio back. Um, so if you're in the EU, you're going to get some jump start soon. And then finally, Commander Legends. Uh, the global release has been delayed until November 20th. Yeah, kind of disappointing, but hopefully... We don't it's, have to go through all the rigmarole that we went through with like, oh, you know, we're going to have the Zendikar Rising first batch shipment at this point, And then two weeks later, we're going to try to get you the rest of it. Yeah, it's like a week later, then we're going to have the collector's boosters and the set boosters. You know, they had set boosters only so they could give them out with the pre-release kits. And right. they're like, then you'll get... No, this it. You know what? It's fine. But I kind of everything I until all this is fixed, I expect every single magic set to just be delayed. It's totally fine. I mean, if 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 they just don't tell us the release date, 
until it's never until they have it finalized. Then it's never delayed. It's just this is the new date. <laughs> no, it should just be surprise. Commander Legends is out today. That would be awful for me personally. <laughs> <laughs> I need preparation financially for Commander Legends. And so this is actually, you know, it gives you a couple more weeks in case you want to get one more paycheck. Make sure you have all your Christmas gifts for all your family members and Maybe you'll already know how much Christmas money you're getting by that point, or Thanksgiving money, if that's a thing. No, it's birthday money. I know, it's birthday money. But Which is right around Thanksgiving. Could, maybe you could have... Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I have... My birthday is right around Thanksgiving, and I have this thing that I call birthday money. I get money for my for my birthday from, you know, people or whatever, if I get, like, from family members. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um and so I like, you know, you, you go to spend that on something, and then you go, well, I was going to buy that anyway. So then you you still have your birthday money. And then that money just keeps rolling over. And it's like, at some point, it's no longer birthday money. You spent that money on magic cards or, or some video game mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. a new fish tank you bought on a whim. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I have a fish tank now. Yeah, so uh, the, the delay says this is including all Commander Legends products, draft boosters, collector's boosters, commander decks, and the pre-releases will um, occur starting November 3rd. November 13th pre-release promos will be given out the previous with the previous date printed on them in regions where in-store play is paused. Organizers may host at home or remote um, pre-releases only. So now that we have this new solidified date, hopefully we'll be able to get pre-orders in with our LGS or any online retailers that you're looking to uh, order them through. We promote LGS first. <laughs> Got to keep them alive. We're going to go back and play at them hopefully soon, hopefully eventually, maybe the beginning of 2021. Um, so make sure that you uh, are buying your 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 products through them so that you can keep the brick and mortar going. Brick, <laughs> brick, brick. Keep, them, keep them going. Got to get the um, brick house going. It was previews. Previews um, are going to start for this on October 26th. So That's very exciting. We got a couple weeks and we can start seeing what, what we're going to get. I'm excited. I'm I'm excited. I mean, we have we even have a question about Commander Legends. So we do. so so we'll see what happens. So mailbag. Yes. Let's answer a but we got a lot of questions that we people did. want. Okay, so you go ahead and start with one of the questions. All right. So uh Ryan on Twitter, uh aka Davos uh DFS MTG asked us, how do you determine who the threat is in an EDH game? It's coil. And have you ever made <laughs> deals in an EDH game that you regret? So how do you determine threat level? Let's start with the second one. Okay. Let's start with the second half. Have you ever made bad have you ever made deals in EDH game that you regret? Yes. 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 Your your partner, Nick, doesn't trust me anymore <laughs> after the very first game I ever played with him when he made a deal with me and then I immediately broke that deal. But you won that turn. No, I was going to win that turn. He had a counter spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This weekend, I made a deal that I would not swing at one of our buddies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I swung everything at Nick. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> but he had out a crawl space so I could only swing two of them. Oh. He goes, oh, you can only swing two. Mm-hmm. So instead of untapping two creatures, I swung them at the person that I said I wouldn't swing at. And I was like, I should not have done this. Oh, yeah. But it was done. I lost that game. Oh, okay. fair enough. Did the, did, the, did the person you made the deal with and then immediately broke the deal, did they win the game? Uh, I don't remember, but it wasn't really a deal. I just said I won't swing at you next turn because I kept going for that person. Oh, I was okay. playing Minotaur, so you have to just swing. You got to swing. No, and I was like, no, I won't. And then I, and then I did. And then... Um, immediately they, i was like i didn't go back on it and they were like you literally did and i said oh you're right because i thought i was swinging at nick and then i just decided not to swing at mm. nick because like well, it's not that i decided not to i guess i couldn't so instead of untapping i just right. threw it somewhere else so i have made made that deal i've also made the deal where you know all right i'll let you resolve this card and it won't be that big of a deal and then immediately you go that card should not have resolved yeah. because I can't, I can't get past the Ristic study I allowed mm-hmm. you to have mm-hmm. or the fact that I allowed you to, you know, someone got a smothering tithe and then they wheeled and you're like, Oh, nice. Yeah. That's really good. That that's happened before where I play a smothering tithe and then mm-hmm. wheeled. And I think you're the one who enabled me to win. Yeah, that's correct. I was like, I'm wheeling. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wheel. Yeah. All right. So determining the threat in an EDH game. In an EDH game. So I think I honestly think we could we could do a full episode on threat assessment. So I guess if we want to keep it at least slightly brief, we have a lot of questions to get through today. I think there are definitely multi facets of threat level. 
Number one is board state, but you can't ignore the person that has a thought vessel and 25 cards in their hand either. <laughs> so, commander matters. The actual commander absolutely. itself matters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but you can also be, you can underestimate a, a commander you don't see very often and go, mm, I guess I should have done something. I didn't know it could do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. One of my, one of my first commanders that uh, people underestimated when I had it was actually Lord of Tressorhorn. So I had a Lord of Tressorhorn deck back in the day. And if you don't know Lord of Tressorhorn, uh, the relevant part of, of his text is he's a 10 four and you, all you got to do is team or battle rage. And, uh, actually a uh, fun fact. The only reason he is a 10 four is because Andy is, uh, putting his fingers up to his headset. That's a 10 four. <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, it actually is why it is 10-4 and not a 9-4 and why Yargle actually is a 9-3 to be just slightly less powerful than Lord of Tressorhorn. But anyway, Lord of Tressorhorn um, has some downsides. When it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice two creatures. Um, so it's kind of easy to to kill it. But once it's on the battlefield and you swing with it and you team or battle rage it and then you kill someone because commander damage yeah no. i look at life totals sometimes when they're relevant so when we played when you played fire song and sunspeaker budget although we know that it's a budget deck mm-hmm. when you were at like 260 life on stream last month mm-hmm. i was like well we're gonna we're gonna have to go because he he can draw past like four turns in a row and he's gonna be totally safe and refill his hand right. and so we all swung but i mean you still came in second yeah it's you know when when someone does have that high life total okay Let's say uh, for me, when I'm playing Fire Song and Sunspeaker and I have that 500 life or something like that. This, by the way, this is off of a um, Star of Extinction resolving with a bunch of creatures out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, uh, so um, when you have that life total and you're, and you're playing as Fire Song and Sunspeaker, you only look for one thing and that's for commander damage or, or maybe infect or something if someone's going to be playing that. So uh, alternate win conditions, I guess, is a really broad way of saying it. But um Every time it's happened with Fire Song and Sunspeaker, I have had my life total reduced to zero. It's crazy, but everyone turns on you. But yeah, I mean, that's a really good point because at any point, that 500 life total, they could be dropping um, an, an Aether Flux Reservoir and killing everyone just immediately. Mm-hmm. So you have to know... You have to know the perspectives. And if you've played with the person across the table, you probably know their deck or their play style. You know if they're going to have that one card win or something like that. So, uh, But if it's, a, if it's a, a stranger that you're playing with at your LGS, I would expect the worst. Expect, expect the unexpected. <laughs> How do you do that, though? It's unexpected. Yeah, my, my other threat is, do you have a smothering tie and a Rhystic study? Because I'm just going to go for you. That's not a not a bad reasoning. Yeah. Are you playing and and like you said before, what am I playing? I don't know. Like our last stream when I played Feather, mm-hmm. I was targeted pretty hard at one point, but yeah. it was fine because that deck can do things. Then it can do no things. It can also so, do nothing. Sometimes you just need to deal with a couple things and then you're good to go. So I don't know. Generally, threat assessment's really difficult, but um, I I think I look at at the the number of cards in hand and the potential for danger in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> let's take another question. This one's from our Discord. This one's from our newest patron, Lenny Woolley. Thank you for joining. A Johnny's Gay Pride made on Twitter. What commanders have you always wanted to build but never have? I, I have an answer for this one. Right, I've always go. wanted to build Muldrotha and I never have. Oh, yeah. So Muldrotha is a Sultai commander. Um, it, it allows you to play with cards that are in your graveyard. So Maldrotha is a 6-6 six, six for 6, uh, 3 black, green, blue. And it says during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. So you can play an enchantment. You can play a creature. You can play an artifact. It's it's so good. This you can play a land. Epic. And it, it has... You can build a budget. Mm-hmm. You can excluding Maldrotha, and you can build it. Oh, Maldrotha's not that expensive. Is not Maldrotha not that expensive anymore? I think it's anymore? under $10 now. Oh, okay. All mm-hmm. right. I thought it used to be like 20 some bucks. I, I guess it, it used was. to be. Yeah. So Maldrotha, I think, is the deck that I used to want to build. I also, and I don't know why, and we've talked about this before off the podcast. Sometimes we're like, I'm not going to play the most popular commanders because everybody plays that commander. And I was like, you know, who cares? I want to <laughs> be able to say I played Maldrotha. I didn't build Najila because everybody built Najila. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Najila's 
really good. Yeah, I think maybe people are afraid of like net decking because people are like, oh, I don't want to play the same deck everyone is. You don't have to play. You can play Moldrotha without the enchantment second chance Moldrotha, to make infinite turns. stupid permanence. I don't know. Anything, sure. it, but, I mean, it. Moldrotha with cards that are only played in 1% or less of the decks they could be played in. What about Moldrotha tokens? You that can, way you can keep recurring the doubling season that people keep removing over and over and over again and the parallel lives. You know, if if you and the primal vigor. Yeah. I mean if if you're playing a, a permanent heavy a permanent heavy strategy and you're sick of people destroying them all the time and you don't have good recursion, well, now you're playing Moldrotha. Yeah. I've always wanted to build this. I have one in my binder. I look at it and go, I need to build a new deck. And then I then I see a new card came out. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know anything from a new set because i have to build new cards <laughs> anything in salt eye anything in salt well not even because when we had that new salt eye hydra came out i wasn't really interested mm. i don't have a salt eye deck and at one point i wanted to build tassiger and mm. tasker is also extremely popular with delve but i just haven't done it i just haven't done it you should build sadisi i'll, gi I'll give you a copy of sadisi for free if you build sadisi I have, Brood I, I have that sadisi oh, okay. i do have that i used to play cons a lot but i th i think i just yeah Okay. Moldrotha, how about you? So so for the longest time, and, and, I, and I'll answer the question the way that it's stated, but for the longest time when we were first started playing Magic, I did want to build the Get Rock Monster, but I ended up building the Get Rock Monster. So, But a, a commander, and I took it apart almost immediately just because it was too strong. Uh, not fun to play. It was solitaire. Um, <laughs> but I guess I've always kind of wanted to do some partner commanders. Um, partners just kind of has a negative connotation because people think it's like super competitive and stuff. Um, but I'm actually kind of excited to get some maybe more underpowered commanders. What I really want to do is I want to build Vile Smasher plus blue and just like make a, a, a nice Grixis shell, just Grixis good stuff with Vile Smasher plus one of the monocolor blue partners coming up here from Commander Legends. Well, you could have done any of the blue ones that were already out. You just haven't built it. That's true. I don't own them. Like Ludvek or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I just don't own them. I only have Vile Smasher. And I sold my Thrasios, I think. I think it came in the um, Yidris pre-con I had at one point. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I have not. Yeah. I haven't. I don't think we've played against the Vile Smasher deck in a long time either. Just no. like partner decks in general. I think I play a lot of the newer partners, but mm -hmm. I haven't played. I don't have any of the old partners in any decks. So I, I had Vile Smasher in my first deck that I ever built on my own, which was my Mogus God of Slaughter deck. And I also had Kaverick, the Merciless in that. Yeah, that was a very good deck. Those were cool. All right. So our next question comes again from our Twitter, from Eric Friends at MTG Frenzy. It says, I'll give you an easy one. What's your favorite deck? But you can only pick one. Your favorite deck. I mean, I've talked about it so much on the show, so I'm just going to say it again. It's totally okay. fine because I am the Noyandar guy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just, I love that deck. I decided to completely foil out an entire deck. Mm -hmm. If you are coming back to the show and this is your first time listening or you haven't listened since the episode when I talked about the Noyandar coat rack mm -hmm. or any of the other times that I've talked about Noyandar, um, it is a blue-white deck that plays a bunch of bounce spells. It, you slow the game down. It's not necessarily control, but there definitely are some counter spells. Sure. Um, but you're looking to probably get to turns like six, seven, eight, and then you start really doing your things. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of games start ending around then. Um, <clears throat> so you're play, playing massive bounce spells or mass bounce spells to bounce all non-land permanents and then cards that destroy all non-land permanents while you're activating your um, ability to turn lands into creatures. They still count as lands, so they stay out. Um, and I have completely foiled that deck for all the cards that can be foil. Okay. I have a Tundra, which is one of the original dual lands. I finally picked that up. Obviously, it can't be in foil unless you have a proxy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Equinox cannot mm -hmm. be in foil mm -hmm. because it's a card from Legends. It's an enchant land that counters a spell that would destroy a land you control because that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have a Thought Vessel, which is not in foil. It wasn't printed in Double Masters. So, so I was trying to think like Basalt Monolith, that one was in foil. Basalt Monolith oh. finally came out in foil. Yeah. yeah. So so my favorite deck, and I know. But... I'm interested because I don't think you've ever said which one's your favorite. Uh -uh. Well, I, I, I have a feeling I know which one it is, but you're going to throw a curveball and it's not going to be I'm, I'm going to throw a curveball just because it is definitely tied between three decks. And, one, and the one I'm going to pick is actually one that's not currently assembled. 
and that is Kokusho Reanimator. Yeah. My my I had a mono black Kokusho Reanimator deck that I specifically built um because I love reanimator decks. And I think it, I think I play like 18 to 20 different reanimation spells in it and the entire goal of the deck is kill Kokusho and reanimate Kokusho. Um and uh, the whole reason I built the deck is one of our LGSs actually had a limit on how many times you could reiterate uh, a an infinite combo. Um, so I wanted to, and and they they limited it to ten interactions. It was, it was, one is five, and I think one was ten. Yeah, it was, it's it was changed five, a couple times. Yeah, it was five on Sundays and ten on Fridays. Okay. So it was for the Friday league, and um, I made it so that in, with Kokusho, every time it dies, each opponent loses five life, and then you gain life equal to the life loss this way. So I made it so 10 iterations of Kokusho dying with my Nim Death Mantle, Ashnod's Altar, and Spawn of Ulamog combo, which makes it so that I kill Kokusho, get two colorless mana, produces an Eldrazi spawn because of Spawn of Ulamog, and then I kill that for two colorless mana to pay the four colorless mana into Nim Death Mantle to automatically bring Kokusho back. You do that 10 times, you do 50 life to everybody, and then you win even with only 10 iterations. So, and, But you have to set all that up in you a do. league, though. You do. And it was and it was for a league, yes, obviously. Yes, it so. was for a league. And it, but it wasn't mono black, and I did run a few tutors to help me set up All right, what's combo. two and three? Uh, she Ray. Okay, that's the one I was assuming. Which is my pet deck. And then uh, Nickel Boss Planeswalkers. Oh, yeah. I haven't played against that in a really long time. It's a very strong Grixis control shell yeah. around a Planeswalker. So I, we have to play. I know. I think the last time I played it was when we played with Zuby. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll have to do an, uh, an Azorius versus Grixis stream again. We, we did that again. Azorius won last time. Um, yeah, because you guys work together because Grixis was infighting a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> As Grixis does. All right. All right. Our next question comes from Bruce from the Epic Experiment podcast. Mm. Do you have any pet cards that you like to build with? So this was hard mm -hmm. because I wouldn't say it's a pet card that I, I, I like to... So pet cards typically are defined as a card that's not particularly good, or maybe it's underplayed or undervalued, mm -hmm. but you jam it into decks just because you like that card. Right. And when I learned about the card Overburden, I really, I really liked it mm -hmm. because you can you can do some funky things by returning lands to your hand. Um, but I've realized that it sometimes can really, I guess pull specific deck strategies to a screeching halt or oh, or, or just they come to a grinding halt because they they just can't um they can't get over this um so overburden's an enchantment for one and a blue and it says whenever a player puts a creature into play they return a land they control to their hand so i play this in noy and i also played in lavinia azorius renegade just because i need time right and i don't have time for you to ramp 12 times and then play like eight creatures um, i need your lands to go back to your hand when you do that so that you have to sometimes discard because you don't have max hand size and stuff i don't want to do that <laughs> um but i would say i have this in three or four decks i i don't know if it's if i'm if it meets the definition of pet card at this point but i do play it a lot because i really like it and i do not think overburden is played very often i'll look it up on edh or i can see what we're at right so and i guess my my pet card it's a card that i've been uh screaming from the hilltops that more people need to play and that is a card final parting so final parting is a five cmc tutor you search for one card put in your hand you search for another card and put it in your graveyard so i just love it because you can search for a creature throw it in your graveyard search for a reanimation spell put it in your hand and then reanimate that creature fine our overburden is in 1452 decks that's it I, I'm actually really surprised that it is that low. And then Final Parting is currently in 9,913 decks. So it's in it's only in 5% of the decks it could be in. It's likely just because it costs 5 CMC. But oh, it, that's, probably that, right. that's probably why. But it's um, a very, very strong card. And I only have a copy because Coil opened a lot of Dominaria. I opened a lot of Dominaria. Can't find a single Final Parting. <laughs> <laughs> now, now one card I remember um, when we were both building our popper decks for a tapped out MTG stream. Um, we tap that MTG. Tap that MTG. Sorry, tap, tap that MTG. Out to the website that you're probably looking at right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember um, we both added a card that we had never seen before, and we both went, "Wait, why isn't this card being played more?" And that's Keep Watch. And Keep Watch is an instant for two and a blue. It says, "Draw a card for each attacking creature." It's like, yeah, I, I, if 
Can that be called a pet card? I need to put it in every blue deck. I still don't have it in every blue deck that I have. It costs three. It costs three mana. And it's an instant. And it's an instant. So you can do it when someone else is swinging in your deck that doesn't even have creatures. You, Someone's going to have creatures. I mean, you would not be able to do it. It would be a really bad card if it was at sorcery speed because you would never be able to cast it That's when creatures were true. attacking. That's unless true. Unless you're like a Vidalcan You're right. So it has to be an instant. <laughs> it did have to be an instant. Yes. <laughs> That was a silly question. <laughs> hey, silly questions, silly answers. All right. So our next question, and um, you know, this is the threefer that came uh, from Twitter from Park, aka P Stock Nine One One. His it's a three parter. So the first one is actually quite a doozy. <laughs> the top five cards in each of your own signature spell books. A signature spell book. Okay. Yep. When people think of me. What cards am I playing? What cards do I play the most, or which cards am I playing? This is your spell book, so it doesn't even have. It could be a card you never played. You just went like, "I want that card to be in my spell book." All right, so I definitely have. I mean, I'm definitely playing a. I definitely have Ristic Study in there. Okay. I mean, for sure, I'm gonna draw cards. Um, I, to to to, um, I mean, maybe go off flavor a little bit here mm -hmm. i really like wheels so maybe like um the heartwarming redemption Ooh. so the, the the boros wheel yeah. that's a really good card you gain life it gives you it. it gives you a little bit um do you gain life off of yeah, that you gain, card? you gain life and also but you also draw one extra than you had and gain life yeah so it, it's it's so that it replaces itself right yeah so yeah you, you discard your hand then draw cards equal to the number of cards you discarded plus, plus one, one and then gain life for each card in your hand yeah 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 so heartwarming redemption um i mean we talked about overburden so maybe an overburden sure in foil in foil of course i've already got it in foil i love it <laughs> um cyclonic rift and i usually play cyclonic rift for two it's a seven cmc spell according to most according i to do most. play it for two i'll a lot yeah if you if you flip it over in your eureka deck you're only doing two damage just only saying two. just saying and then one more spell uh omniscience I, oh oh omniscience okay i'm gonna okay. go with omniscience i'm gonna cast all the all, also i'm gonna cast all the things for free okay yeah everything's gonna be free mm-hmm mm -hmm. okay okay all right my spell book is uh, not only spellbook uh, worm coil engine, but it is spellbook Shirei. Spellbook Shirei. Yeah. So it's actually I, I, that might have been misleading. Worm coil engine, not one of the cards <laughs> in, in this spellbook. <laughs> we are going to have Shirei with its rare symbol from Kamigawa. Okay. That's going to be in it. But We're it's not going to have the planeswalker symbol at the bottom left. No, it will not. <laughs> It will not have that planeswalker symbol. It will not be in foil either. All of these will be non-foil only. Do we have the option to buy yours in foil? No. So yours is coming. Uh, all right. Mine comes in both because I want, I want, no, mine comes in foil. Only foil and mine's only, only non-foil. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so corrupt court official will be one of them. It is, uh, it is a card from uh, Portal Three Kingdoms that when it enters the battlefield, target player discards a card. Yeah, it's mean, but okay. Mm -hmm. In Shirei. Yeah, that's that's correct. We're going to have Burglar Rat. Okay. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card. Um, We are going to have the uh, Black Zubera. When it dies, you, uh, target opponent discards a card for each Zubera that died this turn. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, we are going to have Marionette Master. Was as... that five? Oh, yeah, Shirei. Shirei. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Marionette Master will be the last one, which is a 1-3 Fabricate 3. It says whenever an, uh, an artifact you control goes to the graveyard, uh, you deal damage to target player um, equal to Marionette Master's power. And that, that Zubera is Ashen Skin Zubera. That's what I thought. I knew it was Ashen, and I just wasn't sure what was after Ashen. Very different spell books. Yes. If I went for a specific style of spell book, I mean, I guess I could come up with a commander specific a commander's sure. spell book. No. We should do that as a segment one day. That would be cool. Now, now, corrupt court official, not printed in foil, only printed in white border. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have a black border, still non foil version of corrupt court official. That's fine. Yes. All right. So, so point two, 
that was that was that was question part one. one. That, that was part, part one. one. So part two, describe an ideal commander game for you. I want. I really want to answer this like, <laughs> like they do in um, Miss Congeniality, and <laughs> you just explain your perfect day. <laughs> no, um, the perfect commander game. Everybody gets to do their stuff. Uh, ultimately, I draw a bunch of cards. I probably play two or three cards that people go, what is that? Mm-hmm. Or what? I didn't even know that card existed or I should look into that because it'd be really good in this specific deck. And I play with at least one commander that I've never seen before. Okay. That okay. sounds like fun. That's an ideal game. But everybody gets to, I ultimately, everybody gets to do what their deck is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's not, and it's no longer than an hour and a half. Okay. Okay. All right. My ideal game is going to be power level eight out of, on a 10 scale. Okay. Power level eight. Game finishes around turn seven or eight. Very strong decks around the table. Maybe stuff that is fringe for, for the competitive scene that you don't normally see. Like this is how I describe my own Nickel Bolas deck. Is it's Nickel Bolas. Planeswalk, Planeswalker is not a very strong uh uh, scheme in a four player free for all. So Nickel Boss has a very strong shell for control and then it has Planeswalker. So that's why it's power level eight. You could turn it into Kess, consultation Kess, and it becomes power level 10, but it's power level eight. So I want power level eight all across the board. People are there to compete, but in a friendly way. And I still have to say priority, priority left. Okay, right. priority right, right. <laughs> Back to me. Okay, we're good. In that game, I would put my Narset deck back together. Mm -hmm. I really liked my Narset deck. It was just Narset turns. Right. Which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And at power level eight. Yeah. It would be fun. Power level eight. All right. That's your perfect game. All right. All right. Part three. Part three. Do you consider four player commander more comparable to a game of chess or a session of Dungeons and Dragons? Um, So... I would say D and D because D and D is fun and chess is not. <laughs> All of our chess <laughs> listeners just 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 unsubscribed. I think I've played chess twice, and the most chess that I've seen in the last couple of years is from Harry Potter. Interesting battle chess, got mm-hmm. it? Or fight? Chess. If what that's how it? chess was, though, mm-hmm. maybe I would say chess over D and D. But I enjoy playing D and D, and I also enjoy playing Magic, so it's more like D and D. Gotcha. Um, I'm literally the exact opposite of your opinion. Uh, I've been, I've been playing chess since I was about five years old and, uh, I love the game of chess and I think it's great when it comes to strategy and trying to figure out what your opponent is doing based on their board state. Uh, they don't have anything in their hands if they do their cheating in chess though. That's, that's true. Thing. That's true. And you know what the great thing about chess is there's, uh, there's a clock. And so your opponent only has a certain amount of time to make their moves. Might be nice for magic. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> Priority to you. Hit there that is, clock. There is a timer on spell table you can mm-hmm. track. That's right. If you click that little arrow, if you don't forget when someone ended their turn. That's right. Well, yeah, they'd have to do it with priority and priority would mess up. So the answer to lot. your question is we are indifferent and completely <laughs> not in agreement on that last question. That is correct. <laughs> okay. All right. We have another question from our Discord. Yes. This is from Ben. Uh, on hey. Twitter, the name is Stinky Boys. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> Stinky Boys. The question is, what's your favorite ramp spell? Um, I'm going to let you go first because I have mine. Like, So like Crashing Drawbridge, the way that it's printed looks like a ramp. That does look like a ramp. So it going literal, I'm going to say, say crashing, crashing drawbridge. <laughs> uh, not going literal, I am going to say I really like uh, Tempt with Discovery, especially in a group where people don't know your deck. So, so I'm turning around to reveal <laughs> that I had literally typed in Tempt with Discovery is also, I think, my favorite ramp spell. You play Kadoma's Reach. You play Cultivate. I'm going to play attempt of discovery yeah now the 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 green ramp spell from amonkhet that i can't remember the name of right now 
that allows you to search for two lands and the end of the battlefield tapped. And then if you control three or more deserts, you get two, two, two zombies. That's, exa- that's Hour of Promise. Hour of Promise would probably be my second favorite. Mostly because it can grab both Cabal Coffers and Urborg at the same time. It it can do that. Yeah. But um, Tempted Discovery can do all three Tron lands. Yeah, and untapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nice. Yeah, so I think we we are are going with our favorites. Tempt with discovery. Um, don't pay for it and don't don't do it. I mean, pay for it, as in don't go grab one for your opponent unless you really have to, and you'll be making a mistake. But I always grab it. I will. Make, I don't always. I almost always. I will make a deal with anyone listening right now. If you are ever on our commander stream, if you always say yes to my tempt with discovery, I will always say yes to your tempt with discovery. Temp with Vengeance, never saying yes to that. You probably have a Perforos out, and I don't see it. I've had that happen. I have misplayed real hard on that one before. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> All right. Our next question. Um, you know what? Ben had a second question. Okay. And I think we should go with it. <laughs> don't sigh yet. Don't sigh yet. Uh, so Ben asked, and I'm going to I'm gonna turn this on myself as well. It's not just going to be an attack on Andy. <laughs> <laughs> So Ben asked, uh, have you ever put Oketra's Last Mercy in a commander deck? And the question for myself, have you ever put Neoform in a commander deck? Yeah, okay. So the backstory to this question here is, um, so I'll explain Oketra's Last Mercy. Mm-hmm. It's a sorcery for one, uh, white, white. Your life total becomes equal to your starting life total. Lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. Not a bad card. Cost three. Mm-hmm. You could be at two. You're gonna go back up to forty. That's right. Um, I bought, <laughs> I bought like fifty of this. Card. <laughs> I don't know. I just I thought it was gonna be the card. This is the card. Spoiler alert: It's not the card. Mm-mm. But if anyone needs an Okecha's Last Mercy, you just let me know, and I will mail you. I would even do it for free. Mm-hmm. An Okecha's Last Mercy. Yeah. Granted. You would only have to pay me about a quarter to get the card anyway. That's true. That's all it would cost. It's, it might even be cheaper for you to just go <laughs> find it at your LGS than to wait for me. <laughs> if I did it for free, it's obviously not cheaper. But um, but you'll have to wait. But you'd have to wait. Time right? is money. Need, time, right. So it is cheaper. Yeah, there you go. I value my time as money. That is correct. So this is why this question was asked because... Um, Every time Ben looks through my uh, bulk uh, <laughs> rares, uh, they he comes up to the stack of like a bunch of Ocatra's Last Mercies. Yeah. Okay, so, did you put Neoform in a deck? No, I haven't put it in it. So, and so, how many of those do you have? Uh, 120 <laughs> copies of Neoform. So Neoform is an uncommon uh, from War of the Spark for a green and a blue. It's a sorcery. It says additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield with additional plus one plus one counter on it, then shuffle your library. So this is very similar to Eldritch Evolution, although Eldritch Evolution, you can search for a card with two CMC higher and it's for one green green uh, where this is green and blue. Neoform, you get a plus one plus one counter. Neoform became a big thing. Um, when Grizzle the the Grizzle brand uh, modern deck was Allosaurus Rider Allosaurus Rider um, cheating Allosaurus Rider out and then neoforming Allosaurus Rider into Grizzle brand and eventually winning with a Laboratory Maniac uh, win condition. So I thought neoform was going to be huge. So I said I'm. Um, they were like fifty it was cents for like a month. Yeah. It, maybe it'll come back. Maybe they'll ban enough cards in modern. They ban <laughs> they banned the Urza deck to death. So maybe they'll keep banning things and then Grizzle Brand will become a thing again. <laughs> sure. All I have to do is ban. So honestly, if Force of Negation w- w- didn't get printed in Modern Horizons, I think Grizzle Brand would still be a really good deck today. Force of Negation allowing you to prevent the turn zero or the turn one win from Neoform is huge. So Force of Negation, I own a lot of copies of you. You're worth a good amount of money. If you hadn't got printed, I Neoform might be worth $2 a card right now. And I bought them for about 50 cents a piece. It would be cool. Yeah. Um, so no, I, do, I don't have it in any deck. The only deck I probably would put it in is in Yarrick. But Yarrick is an all permanence deck, so it can't have Neoform in it per my strategy. 
Bummer. Do you have Ocatcher's Last Mercy in any deck? No. Okay. It's not in the deck. No. I didn't even answer that, did I? No. <laughs> nope. Not in a deck. We told you why the question was asked. Yeah. All right. So the next question comes from Dan Krauss, D, uh, DP Krauss Jr. on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was asked in our Discord. Um, if you could hang out with one legendary creature or planeswalker for a day, who would it be and what would you be doing? Oh, man. Um, this is a hard question. I think... I'd be on Ravnica doing something. Yeah. I say I'm in Cat's my favorite plane, but I ain't going there. <laughs> no way. It could, it could be... They didn't say it has to be present day. Assume it's any time. Yeah, it's a desert. I don't want to go there. They have a desert oasis. I mean, Cascading Cataracts looks like a really nice place to just go swimming for the afternoon. I mean, it would be cool to have like the gods walking among you, I suppose. That would be a little scary, though. I, <laughs> oh, I, I guess if you don't don't uh, make Bantu mad. They go stab you in the she, back. She might eat you. They go stab you in the back. Yeah. Um, I, I'm... Honestly, I'd probably also go to Ravnica and I'd probably try my hardest to go to, you know, a library. Talk oh, you to just want to go to a library? Talk to some people in a library. You're going to be at Coils and they're just like pulling books to see if you can get something to open. I would try to find the Demir so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, there are the librarians. That's correct. <laughs> so find Lazav, find out how to join, become a Demir lose my entire mind because Lazav mind controls me. Great time. Okay. That that I I'm gonna go a different route. Okay, okay. But I'm also gonna be a round. <laughs> and but I like guilds where it's like it's fall. Mm. You know, it's still it's really nice. The best time of the year started. Like now. So sure. yep. <clears throat> yep. So it's fall. And I'm gonna be somewhere you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go sightseeing. I'm gonna see all the gates. Oh. I'm gonna okay. go check out the gates. I don't know who with, but I guess maybe I'll... Matt Selesnia. Matt. I don't know if it's Matt or Mott. I don't know. I haven't... <laughs> Me be neither. Fair. Never met him before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would probably be traveling with some legendary from Ravica. Maybe it is... I mean, it could be Lavinia. She seems like she'd be a good host. Oh, I, in all the stories, it just seems like kind of a wet blanket, though, sometimes, too. She, I mean, she's a little stiff in yeah. the stories. Yeah. So maybe I go with, uh, what was her name? Hakara? Oh, yeah. Hakara was, yeah, the from Rakdos. She seemed really funny. Yeah. She seemed really nice. As long as she's not trying to stab you the whole time, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah, so sightseeing with Hakara. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I was about to ask you if there's anyone that you didn't, any legendary that you didn't want to go. Like, I don't want to go sightseeing with Borborygmos. I don't want to go sightseeing with Rakdos. I don't want to go sightseeing with Dovin Bon. I don't want to go sightseeing with Dovin Bon. Dovin Bon can't go sightseeing. Ha. Huh. Spoiler. It's not a spoiler anymore, but he got, <laughs> he got throwing darts in his eyes yes. in the story. So from Chandra. Just kidding. It was Lazav. It was <laughs> it was it was you being controlled by Lazav. Yes. Okay. And then there was there was a quick follow up, which is a fun a fun Michigan related question. And they said and follow up because Dan's asked on our on our Twitter before, and they they talked about it online. Um, they said follow up. Does it involve Sanders hot fudge? Um, and if so, uh, or and if not, why not? So Sanders is a Michigan-based company. It mm-hmm. started out as a chocolate shop. Today they sell. Uh, so if you're from Michigan, you you definitely know about Sanders. You, there's mm-hmm. hot fudge and they sell bumpy cake. Both are delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, really good gifts at Christmas. In all honesty, and for sure. I send them to my clients that live out of state because mm-hmm. you know you do that. You do better made chips and you do Verners. So would would my time on Ravnica include Sanders hot fudge? No. But I'd come home and I'd eat some. Sure. If Lazav <laughs> wanted me to do things with Sanders hot fudge in order to join the Demir, I would do them. <laughs> I would. I would. But you know, I, I think does is Sanders sold by Morley Candy? I was always a Morley Candy growing up. N- no, I don't they I don't believe they're associated. No, I, I I don't know if they like buy the Sanders and then sell it in their catalog because Sanders oh because Sanders isn't a catalog company but Morley is a catalog company. I don't I don't believe so. In 2018, Sanders became a division of Cars Nuts. Oh, I don't think there's. I mean, I don't know much about Morley candy, so I'm gonna crack open a Rock and Rye Fago, eat some better made potato chips, drive my GM car, and 
go on some roads that have giant potholes in them everywhere. On your way to Mackinac. Welcome to Michigan. Pure Michigan. Pure Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the questions. I think we have some more. So we have a we have more on Twitter and we have more from our Discord. So um, on our Discord, we have uh, Magic Man twenty six fourteen asking, "What is your favorite part about Magic?" So this can be anything. Okay, I like opening packs. I really Ooh, like opening I didn't packs. Even think about that. I just said it could be anything, and I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think opening packs, and particularly with Zendikar Rising, I really enjoy opening the the box topper. Ooh, yeah, it's really fun. Um, I like opening packs, and um, you know, as I I know I might have complained about it, but like. I don't mind sorting cards because the satisfaction mm. of having them sorted at the end is like all my cards are sorted by set mm -hmm. and by color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like card sorting while listening to like magic podcasts or watching like command zone. And yeah. I, I just have it on in my, in my, in the game room while I'm sorting cards all over the floor. Nice opening packs, but I immediately throw the pack in a, in a waste bin. I do not just throw it on the table or the floor. Oh gosh, but that's the best part. <laughs> it's not. You let someone else clean up your mess. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, the best part about cooking is cooking. You get yeah. someone else to clean up for you if you can. Isn't You'd the be best like, part about I cooked, you clean. Yeah, I like crockpot dinners. So yeah, that's good. <clears throat> so my my favorite part about magic. Um, I'm going to be real cheesy with this one. It's going to be meeting all these new people that we've been meeting through the podcast and streaming and all this stuff. And the community that we've developed has been really, really cool. Yeah. And never expected something like this to happen. And yeah, no, that's been and my who, favorite who, part. who knew it would take off the most when we were all stuck at home and couldn't even get together. Yeah. No kidding. Thank goodness for webcams. <laughs> Started the podcast over a year ago, brought Coil on, and then it's like, oh, we met all these people who would like to have us on their show. We want them to be on our show. We've had um, guests on our stream. We've been on other people's stream. It's It's been a lot of fun. So yeah, that's also really... Yeah, pe people asking us for our opinions on like deck builds and stuff, and it's like... Who am I? Yeah, it's like in my head, I'm like, why do you care what I think? Right. <laughs> but thank you for, for caring what we think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I read a lot of articles, but I think I learn something new or think about something a different way every single time I read an article. I'm like, mm. why is this card here? And then I read the three sentences about why they included this card. And I was like, why was I never including this card? Mm. Because it makes so much sense as to, you know, why someone's including X card. So, mm -hmm. um, Okay, fine. That's my second favorite part. Okay. But I really like opening packs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very fair. Okay. Another question. Let's let's pull one from Twitter here. Let's pull one from Twitter. We have a question from um gotta pull one up. It's from Oh wait, did we answer all the questions? We no, no, no. Hold three. on. We do. We There's do. We do have one tweet. more. Yeah. We do. Have, we do have another question. We have one more. Okay. So the question is, where are you at? It was, how do you determine when? Yeah. So it says, what makes you keep um, you keep a deck together or pull it apart? Um, this is from Jacob Besh. So the Besh around on Twitter. Um, I'm half considering ripping apart four or five decks and making new ones and switching commanders to get new colors. So what makes you keep it together or take a deck apart? So um, I like when I enjoy playing the deck over and over. Um, so, so I leave it together. I also um, like to have variety. So I have one, like I've talked about this before. If I, it's been, it's been a minute. I have one commander deck for all 10 guilds on Ravnica mm -hmm. and the commanders are actually from each of the guilds. Mm -hmm. um, I want to have a night where we just play um, in person and we can just like roll a die and everybody just plays those guilds. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the decks are stronger than others. So I don't really know if they're all on the exact same sure. level, but um I leave those together because I like the flavor. I like the way that those decks play. Mm -hmm. um, I take a deck apart when I don't enjoy how it plays or if it's extremely repetitive. Right. So like one of the decks I took apart was Lord Wind Grace. Personally, mm -hmm. I did not just, I just didn't like playing mm -hmm. that deck. Mm -hmm. um, I took apart Narset. 
um, Enlightened Master because the deck played out the same way. I cast a couple big spells and then no one else really had fun. I really enjoyed it. And and there was some variance because you have to flip four and, right. and sometimes you don't do very well or you get two artifacts and you go, well, I did not need an artifact right. because I have three lands in my hand. Mm -hmm. I needed a spell. Um, but to keep it together, I really have to like the deck or it... I just haven't been back to it in a while to realize I haven't enjoyed it to take it apart. Right. Yeah. I would say, I, I think I agree on, on most accounts. Um, it's, it's when a deck gets stale for me that I try to spice things up. So I, I did a combination. I took, I took my mono black reanimator deck apart and I took my get deck apart and I made a Golgari, uh, dredge reanimator deck combination uh helmed by hogak killer of modern so you know so, something like that where you maybe you do want to expand into more colors uh something isn't quite doing what you want maybe you have a deck where hey this deck would be a lot better if i could draw cards so let me add a commander that has blue or green so you can actually gain more access to those card draws um just make sure that you are it's i i same rule that if you're going to get a tattoo for me, you know, you got to you got to sit on that idea. Am I OK with taking this deck apart right now? Am I never going to play this deck again? And as soon as you can say, yes, I'm never going to play this deck again. Take it apart. You need those. You need those, you know, expensive permanents for your other decks. Do it up. Do it up. All right. We so, have. Yeah. So one question again from our discord. OK. From uh, Chris or Kelsum, Kelsum Gaming. Uh, what are your top five hopes for commander legends okay so i have i've said this i think i even said it on twitter mm -hmm. some of them i would like to see the remainder of the 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 um, ravnica parents from okay. yep. from the guilds that we have not seen yet so we have not seen the um selesnia um param which is um matt selesnia uh we have not seen the gruel parent which is uh but I'm going to try this. Cizarzim. Mm, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have not seen that one yet. And we have not seen the Golgari, the Golgari Perrin, um, Svathir. And we haven't seen the Simic Perrin either. Simic. And you're right. We have not seen Simic. And that was just signed on the guild pact with the word Simic. That's so they right. assume their, their name is Simic. It's going to be some gelatinous blob. Uh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So so there's there's four okay there's okay. four i'm gonna count those as four because sure. i've talked about this maybe it could be one another one would be a um i don't want green to have anything broken okay I, in all honesty but i'd like to see a commander and we talked about this a lot. i think we we did briefly talk about i think when we first 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 heard about commander legends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want a commander legend that cares about level up okay yep it's a mechanic that we haven't seen. I really like commanders that care about specific mechanics because when I build a commander deck, I don't really have a good stuff deck. I usually have a commander that needs to be out for the deck to function properly. Right, right. So that's what I would like to see. Okay. Um, for me, I know we all know that we're getting a Jessica Planeswalker for, for all intents and purposes. We quote unquote know we're getting a Jessica Planeswalker. I want that to be uh, command as commander oh, legal. Can be commander. Can be commander legal. I will want a planeswalker commander. Just Jessica. Oh, <laughs> that's it. That's the only one. Uh, si sister of uh, of Kamal. I think they're brother sister. I think. I don't. I don't to remember. be fair, I'm not sure, but I I do know that Ashiok is not the son of. That is correct. We figured that out. We figured that out. Uh, <laughs> I want uh, a Mishra that can be um, like played better in commander. Sure, the not, not the one that cares about the names of like multiple yeah having specific. multiple cards of the same name in your deck uh -huh. um i want a i want vile smasher to have a good blue partner okay um, i am sure you will find one right um i would like them to finish the battle bond land cycle um so we we have the ally colors for the battle bond lands i would like the enemy colors for the battle bond lands okay and um some hot spicy mono black partner commanders that would go really well together okay to black and black i want i want because coil wants to build the best color pair deck and it's mono black mono black is the best color combination in magic the gathering <laughs> yes <laughs> so those are my 
five hopes for commander legends okay we have another question from lenny um a johnny's gay pride mate mm. on twitter what's the coolest deck you've seen in the in the wild that wasn't built by him <laughs> not, <laughs> so lenny's got really lenny. cool decks um i have this is a good one i i have lost to a an um rada a green red rada deck mm -hmm. which rada the the one that gives you mana when you're swinging for each creature, the one from Dominaria. Dominaria, right? Yeah, yep. I think that's for each creature. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just got trampled over. And honestly, it was really cool seeing because they were just like, "No, I'm gonna do this. No, I'm gonna give it indestructible because I have all this mana." Mm -hmm. That was a really cool deck to see. Um, and I, I like to play. I just have a thing playing against like Dino decks. Those are really fun. Okay, they're not particularly like unique i guess i mean i'm not saying they're not i'm not, all the dino players are now turning off the podcast they're like wow i'm never listening to the show again yeah they're buried prehistoric <laughs> but they're definitely you know they're playing dinos for mm -hmm. sure but um i i think it's i think i'm gonna go with that one yeah rada a rada deck that our, our buddy kyle had okay it was really cool cool so i i also kind of have two um so one when we first started playing uh webcam magic um this was in the uh, play EDH discord. I found the first time I'd ever played against a Hirobi death's whale deck, which is all about whenever something becomes the target of a spell, destroy that creature. And I'd never seen someone play Hirobi before. So that was really cool to see. Was um, it ho horrible? No, it was great. <laughs> it was actually really, I, I like, played against one before and it was very cool. All the ridiculous artifacts that are tapped to give a creature plus one, plus one. You're mm -hmm. like, wait, it, that's just dead now. Yeah. Shoot. Bye bye. <laughs> Uh, and the other one was actually a deck that I found um, at Command Fest Chicago, which was a, a deck in Black Blade um, Esper deck, which was all about voting. It had all the vote cards. I remember there. you were at that table. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember the uh, gentleman that was playing that deck, his, his name, but um, very, very unique deck. And uh, I think we actually played it in um, a game of Pinata. So it was uh, trying to trying to destroy the uh, pinata rather than each other. So those were those were the two really unique decks that I have found in the wild, not made by Lenny. Not made by Lenny. And I think we have one last question. This is coming from Bruce from the Epic Experiment podcast. Okay. Um, uh, when you are building a deck, who do you like to talk to about card choices and why? I I feel like when I build a deck, I reach out to Coil and brian um mm -hmm. one of our old hosts yes uh why because they understand magic and they're also building decks for commander specifically so they usually have their own their own take on it they, they call me if they're if they want tips on azorius cards <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i don't know how to play mono black coil what do i do here you just kill things <laughs> reanimate and make sure gray merchants in your deck somewhere <laughs> brian's our green our green aficionado mm -hmm. so i reach out to brian how do i build green you got cultivate Kodamas reach all that you you got the basics okay let's find the big green spills now yeah yeah I don't I mean I would like to do more crowdsourcing I guess for my deck building because I don't do much of it we talk a lot now that we have the discord mm -hmm. we reach out and we're like okay thoughts on this mm -hmm. or we, we do post things on Twitter and we get a lot of responses now you do a lot of hey here's what I'm gonna play tonight and then you'll get some responses on right. are you playing it this way or how about this card or here's my favorite card for a she Ray deck mm -hmm. I've seen lots of posts on she Ray so yeah. And in my my Morophon deck is an it was an everything tribal that we're spoiler we're gonna shift it a while a little bit, um, but yeah no I, I I just I really like using Scryfall as a tool and uh, and I don't I think I should ask other people more because you'll you'll learn about some very invaluable cards that you don't know about that maybe you can't find on Scryfall or something, um, so yeah you should definitely reach out more i should definitely reach out more we both should reach out more we should reach out more <laughs> reach out reaching out touching hands oh no nice. <laughs> okay <laughs> touching hands. i was just gonna nice sweet caroline i know <laughs> bum, bum, bum. all right <laughs> we're not gonna continue we have to stop we have to move on i know <laughs> but before we sign off i think that's the end of our questions today it is. we do want to remind you that we have a stream every thursday for paper commander uh tomorrow uh zach and ryan are joining from commander social they're going to be back on the show so that's really exciting um so i'm looking forward to getting my butt kicked because that's what happened last time um 
but mm-hmm. we usually play a little bit, you know, uh, upper mid um, power level. So I might pull out some decks I haven't played before, like the Locust God, maybe. Nice. I haven't played that on stream ever, or Lavinia. I've never played it on stream. As long as I get uh, some of the singles that I uh, messaged one of our LGSs about, I should be able to complete my Illuna deck for yeah. that stream. So. Yeah. So check that out. Um, you can that that we stream on my Twitch page at twitch.tv slash atflory. That's at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Um, and thank you all for listening. If you want to contact us, you can find our podcast on Twitter at Guardian Pod. You can find me on Twitter at atflory. You can find me on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine. And you can email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com or tweet at us. Um, thank you for sending all of your questions this week. We hope we answered all of them. Uh, sufficiently and if you have any more send them to us because we'll be doing more mailbag questions in the future yes the conclusion of episode 69 nice nice (laughs) Brian yeah nice